One of the longest presidential campaign seasons in memory comes to an end today as tens of millions of Americans head to the polls. But while U.S. citizens of all walks of life will ultimately decide who our next president will be, wealthy donors have had an outsized influence in this election through the use of their wallets. WSJ reporter Rebecca Ballhouse joins us from Washington with more on this. Welcome, Rebecca. In your journal story, you call 2016 the year of the donor elites. Their share of election funding continues to grow. Is that right? That's right. We saw the amount of money that millionaires and billionaires were pouring into this election a balloon to the largest scale it's ever been. So we saw spending by outside groups, which can accept unlimited contributions from these wealthy donors, grow to 22 percent of overall spending, up from 15 percent in 2012. And this is a relatively small pool of people. About 60 millionaires and billionaires accounted for more than half of super PACs backing the candidates. Is that right? Yes, that's right. So we saw a very small group of donors uh, really be spending the bulk of the money that these super PACs spent on behalf of Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And in an unusual twist, most of those donors' uh, donations went to fund Clinton rather than Trump. Typically, the way it works is that mega donors fund the Republican over the Democrat. But because Trump's super PACs were so late to get off the ground, because he spent so much time complaining about donors, saying he wouldn't accept a super PAC, Clinton really got the advantage. All right. And ironically, though, the overall spending by the presidential campaigns this year was dwarfed by the spending for the 2012 campaign. That's sort of interesting. Right. That's been a fascinating thing to observe, because the way it typically works is that every presidential election is more expensive than the one that became that came before it. And especially this year, you know, at the outset of this election, Jeb Bush started by saying he'd raised $100 million before he even entered the race. So a lot of election experts expected this to be by far the most expensive race in history. And instead, what we saw is that spending by both campaigns declined this year, not just Trump's. And both presidential candidates also saw a drop off in small donations this campaign cycle. Is that right? Right. So that was part of my reasoning in calling it the year of the donor elites, because while we saw these uh, the spending by these mega donors soar, uh, campaigns collected about half as much from small donations, which the FEC calls $200 or less, as they did in 2012. Now, Rebecca, where do we go from here? Because there's no doubt that many people are unhappy about the influence of a few of the wealthiest donors in America. One poll that you mentioned in your story taken in February showed 76 percent of likely voters are upset by this dynamic. So do you see any changes ahead? I think that really depends on the outcome of tonight. So Clinton, who has benefited so much from the current campaign finance rules, has said that she would appoint a Supreme Court justice who would overturn Citizens United, which would have a huge impact on the campaign finance system. Trump has also complained about the system, but at the same time, after he became the effective nominee, he hired as his deputy campaign manager the president of the conservative group Citizens United, which brought that Supreme Court case. So I think tonight's uh, outcome will really affect how things go in the next couple of years in terms Ab of campaign finance. Absolutely. All right. We will see. Thank you, Rebecca Ballhouse in Washington. Thanks so much.